Um, I just want to run through, sorry, my name is Jane Daly, um, I'm co-director of the Irish Theatre Institute and this event is being presented um, in association with the College of Contact Point which is housed at the Arts Council. Um, ITI was approached by CCP a number of months ago um, to see if we would be interested in getting involved in an information session around EU culture funding. Um, which of course we said yes, we'd love to because we work in the international area quite a bit. Um, so Neve and Jen Coppinger in particular have worked together on this project, on this event, um, which we very much see as a balance between information provision and discussion. So the first half hour we're going to be just setting, setting the context and providing relevant information for the day. And after that we will then get into um, two breakout groups. Those of you who have, I believe you've got soul stickers, some of you have red dots, um, which means that you will be going to the room upstairs and the rest will stay here. There will be a brief turnaround in this room at half past eleven. Um, and then you will rotate, the groups will rotate in the day. So you will get an opportunity to have uh, good detailed discussions with our international guests who are, uh, firstly, um, Martina Marty here, who is in the front row, who is um, originally from Switzerland, who has travelled extensively through her work throughout Europe, um, and has worked a great deal with the Theatre Information Centre in Helsinki. So she's both, both a theatre artist and somebody who is very au fait with the way EU programmes work, both in terms of constructing them and actually I uh, think rolling them out. And I would say that she's also the current president of uh, the On the Move um, organization uh, since 2010. So a wealth of experience, a lot of knowledge. Um, and then we have, um, if you like, a, a double act um, for in the other group, we have people who have worked together, which is Gavin Quinn, who's the artistic director of Pam Pam. Again, in a, from an Irish perspective, a lot of experience over a long number of years working on uh, European projects. Um, successfully, I might add. And um, a colleague of his, uh, Martin Oshtu, who's based in Amsterdam and is um, a long time uh, a theatre director and currently manager of uh, Du Part Theatre uh, in Amsterdam. And we invited Martin because he has worked with Gavin on projects in the past. So we're going to have the opportunity to explore how they actually work in practice from an Irish perspective working with uh, European partners. Um, the housekeeping schedule, um, we're going to be finished by 3 o'clock. Um, Neve and I are going to run this first session, uh, which will finish at 11.30, if I can stop talking. Um, we will then break out into the parallel sessions. We're going to break for lunch at 12.45, um, for about an hour, where you can have a, a time to chat. There's a nice little garden at the back with a smoking, a smoking room for whoever wants to, in this nice weather, avail of that. Um, and then we reconvene a quarter to two for an hour where you rotate into your second session. And then we just do a kind of a 15 minute uh, wind up session with some feedback. Um, I'm going to just kick it off to set the context for the event. Are there any questions on the running for the day or how it's going to work or anything? No? Okay. Um, I'm just going to very, very briefly, if you like, set the context for the day. As I said, this is an initiative um, which the Cultural Contact Point came to us with and we've be become involved with them to work on. And essentially, um, earlier this month there was a, an article in the Irish Times which stated that few Irish cultural organisations are winning funds from Europe's 400 million culture programme. I'd like to point out that this event predates that article in the Irish Times. <laughs> We're working on this uh, for a, a lot longer than that, so it's purely coincidence. But I think it's useful because in, in my feeling is that it's not necessarily that we're, that we're not winning these funds, it's that we're not competing for them. And if we were to compete for them, I think there's probably a very good chance that we would win them. So why, why is it that we're, that we're not um, availing of some of this money? And these are kind of prompts for discussions during the day. Is it about actually knowing how to access the information? Uh, is it about lack of resources and networks, particularly in terms of international networks and partnerships? 
Um, are there problems with committing math matching funding because of the way the funding system works here? Or is there actually a perception that it's just too difficult and there's too much work involved in it? So those are the kinds of things that just kind of, you know, park them with you. Uh, some of you have experience of these projects, some of you don't, so I think there's a nice mix in, in the room. Um, I'm just going to throw a few statistics, as I say, you know, as it's statistics, there's lies, damn lies in statistics, and you can spin them whatever way you want, but um, I looked at the uh, 2011 um, round, the decisions for 2011, and um, in the strand that we're very, I think we're probably most familiar with, which is the one that, that which is up to two years, a project running up to two years, with a budget a grant available of uh, 50 to 200,000. Projects submitted um, starting in 2011, there were 280 proposals made to the culture program from 30 countries. I think, can you know, is it 34 countries? In, 36 countries are actually eligible to apply for this funding. 30 countries applied. Um, proposals submitted from Ireland, with Ireland as a lead partner, was one, which is less than half a percent of the total that was submitted. There were 103 successful proposals, and the number of successful proposals with Ireland as a lead partner was one. So you can see, we, you can say we had a hundred percent success rate, but um, I, I actually think the key figure is the 0.35 percent over there. All right. So that's the statistics lies down there. Interesting when you look at the co-organisers. All of these projects need multi-partnerships, uh, um, and Eve will mention how many for which strand. Um, of the 280 proposals, there were nine. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to say that the successful project was the Improvised Music Centre, um, with a project called 12 Points. Um, the total number of co-organisers across all those proposals was 950. So it's 950 organisations. The total number of Irish organisations as co-organisers was again eight, less than one percent. And again, we had a fifty percent success rate. And um, four organisations actually uh, were our participants in successful projects. Um, and I've named them because there were only four. I was able to put them on here. Uh, Culture Ireland, who's working with uh, the Improvised Music Centre project. The Dublin Dance Festival, which is working on a project with Portuguese partners, I think it is. Um, no, sorry, Romanian partner, lead partner. And um, the St. Patrick's Festival, uh, we're working uh, with a Spanish partner, which I think is in Torrega, in the festival in, in Spain. And then the Cork Vision Centre, which is a visual arts uh, project, uh, are working with the Goethe Institute in <coughs> Germany. Okay? So again, Less than one percent of the of the applicants were Irish. If you look at the second strand, the big strand where the big money is, um, over the five year, three to five year projects, where you can secure up to half a million euro per year of activity, the total number of proposals was sixty one across nineteen countries. <coughs> the number of successful proposals was ten. Um, the number of co-organisers in this instance was 450 organisations involved. And again, the number of Irish co-organisers were four, again, less than 1%. And the number of successful Irish co-organisers in this instance is none. None of the projects with an Irish co-organiser successfully secured money. So I just want to, want to say that, to kind of park that idea that the participation is very low. And to go back to the idea that it's not that we're not winning the money, it's actually that we don't seem to be competing for it. So, for the day, the kind of things I, I, I would say is that there is scope for Ireland to access more of the available EU funding. And how might we go about improving our involvement? And that's what we hope you talk about today, or some ideas or questions might provoke ways in which we can start to think about it in a more active way and that we do welcome any and all suggestions and ideas. Um, we are recording the session so that we can actually give you feedback and actually when you leave today it's not that that's the end, of the, that we want to try and follow up on it and look at what comes out of the day um, and hopefully that it might actually stimulate some activity uh, so that in future we are actually improving our, our performance.
for this 400 million. 